Mm, good day, Tragic here, and welcome back to Legends of Andor. This is t day two. Let's get straight into this. You might notice there's a big box at the top of the screen now. That's because I'm now playing in hot seat mode, because uh, I find it really confusing sometimes. Because when you, when you move, right, you move, and now it is Orange's turn. But if, say, say that's what it looks like, and Orange and Yellow are sharing a space and like yellow attacks, he moves and orange moves. And when I'm playing solo, I just find it really confusing sometimes. So I'm gonna do it in hot seat mode so I can keep track of whose turn it is a little easier. Now there's also a little bit of an error. Basically, we forgot to move this guy at the end of the last turn. So he moves and the herb moves with him. So he follows the arrow into 58. Also, there's an error over here. Basically, monsters move from the lowest value first. So I went 19 and then 20 moves into the one because this space is taken. But one thing you've got to remember is, well, I've got to remember, <laughs> is that monsters do actually have a movement order. So gore moves, all the gores move before the scrolls. In fact, these dog things move twice. So you've got to take that into account. So it's actually, even though this guy's a larger number, he moves into here, which means 19 moves to one. So that's the new situation that we're in. Okay. So this is not a particularly good situation because we're going to have three different monsters enter the castle next turn. This guy's going to enter the castle. This guy's going to enter the castle. But remember, the gores move first, so it's going to go bam, bam. And enter the castle. So this next turn we will be in. So next turn we will be overrun. So we have to kill some monsters. And what I would like to do is kill two monsters. This turn, if possible, at least. Now remember, when we do kill a monster, we will be activating this next legend as well. So that's the situation. Now, even though in the first turn I basically moved the dwarf seven spaces in one go. I actually like to move individually, usually. It just gives me more freedom. So I'm just going to spend one like that and move to the next turn. So it's now orange. Orange is going to use his ability to just activate the prince. And it's going to go one, two, three, like so. And now it's the whites, and he's going to also activate his wraith. So that's one, two, three, four, like so. Now it's the mage's turn. The mage is going to go one, two, th uh, one. Let me have a look at this. One two, three, four, and move into this area up here. Okay, we're back to the dwarf. He's gonna move one spot. Now, yeah, I could move him all the way, but I like moving people in individual sections. Now you might wonder why, oh, this is supposed to be tapped. You might wonder why I haven't used the crow to peek at anything. It's because I'm going to use the crow to peek at the rune stones when they come out. You'll see that in action. Okay, so that's the end of his turn. And now we are on this bloke. So he's going to initiate a combat and be helped by the mage. So he's going to roll his two dice. Wow. Wow. That's pretty shocking. Uh, I'm actually going to use the Mage's ability to change the 3 to a 5. And then the Mage is also going to roll, but using the Spirit Die and get to 6. So that's 11 plus 4. So we are 6. So we're, uh, what, 6 plus 5 equals 11. And then we're 11 plus 
four for 15 because of the total strength. I'm just gonna start using this thing here just to show how the things are working. Okay, so we're a total strength of 15. Now I'm rolling for the gore. Low numbers, please. Wow, look at that. Two plus two is four. So we beat him by 11 points. We only need four to kill. It's a bit of an overkill, really. Seems like maybe it was even a waste of uh, movement points. Okay, so this guy is killed. Your blam moves this guy up by one and activates the runestone legend. Okay. So basically, we'll start with the top bit. Uh, one gore in space, 32 and 43, and one scroll in 39. So 39 is here. And 31 and 32, was it? 32 and 43. There's 33. Okay, here's 43 is here, and th 32 is here. Okay, so basically, we had uh, these three spaces got taken, had places put in them. And now, the rest of this is basically just saying, if you collect three rune stones of separate colors, you get to roll this awesome uh, black die here, which is like, a crazy powerful die. Like, look, it's got a 12 on it, basically. And I think the lowest value on this die is a six. And I think it's got two sixes and two tens. It's just a really strong die. And remember, the Witch's Brew allows you to double a die face. So if you are doubling a die, that means that the black die can roll just by itself 24. Incredibly strong. So we really want to get these things. So the the way we do this is you just roll. We're going to use the black die is going to be for the uh, tens. So you blam. So that's 56. Just give this a shuffle. 56 is up here somewhere. Yep. And we want these kind of close to our heroes, really. 25, that's a little better. 25 is down here. Not too good. Fifty-five. Ugh. Fifty-five, that's uh, right up here somewhere. Bam. Wow, these are really spread out. This is not good. Come on, 33, that's a little nicer. That's down here, I know. Okay, so they're kind of close to each other, but these are really out, these two are really out of the way. These ones here are good because we can kind of pick them up on our way, which is good. On our way to the, uh, to the castle. 46, this is the last one we're placing. 46 is here. Okay, so this, this isn't too bad. I would have liked them to be all around here. But as long as these ones are all different, we're fine. So we're going to be able to use this guy's ability to peek at these guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this and just look at this one. That's yellow. So the reason I'm looking at that one is because we have to cross the bridge here most likely. And we probably would like to duck in there for a well before the end of, uh, before we do the attack. So we're basically going to go through those two zones anyway. So I'm going to basically peek at these ones each turn to make sure that they're all different. If not, we'll have to come down and get one of these. So that's not good. Okay, and that's the end of that turn, and we'll just make sure that the, the bird is flipped over. Okay. Now it's uh, White's turn. So what is White going to do? 
I think white is just going to spend one and move down here. And purple is going to spend... Okay, let's just have a quick look at this. When a hero performs a move action, he may use the water skin to move one space without advancing his time marker on the time track. Now, does that mean that I have to use at least one hour of time? I think it does. It says when he performs a move action. So we're going to spend one hour and use that one, two and flip the wine skin over. We're back to yellow. He's going to move one more. Orange is going to spend one and move up here. A hero who occupies or enters space nine buy two strength points for two gold. Ah, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to take the two gold for killing the gore. So we just take the two gold, spend it there, and let's put him to four strength. And that is the end of this. Now in Tabletop Simulator, if you drop a card on a deck, it'll resize to the deck size. And that's just a very quick way of resizing the cards in this game, because I often, a lot of the cards get placed on the board. And I like to scale them down like I did there. Okay, whatever. So that's his turn. It is now yellow. So here we are. We have... What are we missing? Right, so he's going to spend one more and move the water spirit. One, two. So it's now Purple's turn, and Purple has to decide whether he can attack. So we've got the two mages, we've got the Prince for plus four. So the question is, can we beat a Skrull with the two mages? That's a good question. Yeah, I don't know. I think we've got enough power here to do this. We've got the four strength, we've got the Wraith die. I think we're going to do this. So... Basically, let's... Okay, we'll start by rolling for the white mage. He gets a six. So he's rolled a two. So the opposite side of the that is a five. Yeah, so we're going to keep it with the six. And now this guy's going to roll... And he gets a six. So that is excellent. So we've done pretty well here. Not too, not as good as we could, but basically that is 6 plus 6 equals 12. 12 plus 4 for the strength between the heroes equals 16. And then 16 plus 4 for the prince equals 20. So that's actually pretty damn good. Because remember, both these guys have two strength each. So let's roll for the scroll. As long as we don't get doubles, we're good. Okay, so that's five and six is 11, which means we beat it by nine points. And we only need six to kill a scroll. So, bammo, he's dead. Boom. Now we've saved the castle. So all the threat for the castle's gone. This guy's still here, but he's gonna take two turns to get in. So that's two turns. It's all about delaying now. We basically want to abandon the castle and start working on our end game. We still need to get this freaking herb, which really sucks because we might have to keep the mage back down here because this has just got so far to travel. It's going to be very, very annoying. Okay. And did I actually... Did I not move this guy? I don't think I moved that guy for the combat. And this guy for the combat. Did I not move them for the combat? I don't think I could have. Okay, bam. Okay, back to yellow. He's going to move one more spot. Uh, 
this bloke is going to spend one movement to move the prints. One, two, three, four. We're going to have them try and take out this guy as well. Mainly, not because we really have to, but just for gold reasons. I want to, I want the dwarf to have another influx of gold so he can buy some more hardcore, uh, you know, junk. Okay, and now it is the ma uh, the white mage's turn. He's actually going to do a trade and take the shield and the water skin from the other mage. And then he's going to activate once to move the wraith down here as well. Now, it's this dude's turn. What is she going to do? I think she is just going to pass. Yoink. Back to yellow. Yellow is going to move one more into here. Orange is now going to go one, two, three, and flip over this. It's an event. One, two, three. Each hero may spend three willpower points to receive one item from the merchant, except the witch's brew. Graz the Dwarven Trader makes an offer. Okay, well that's excellent. So that's really good actually. So starting with you, we're going to go to four and buy the Falcon. I think this guy is going to go to four as well and buy the helmet. This guy's going to go to nine and also buy the helmet. We don't really need these things, but uh, may as well since we've got the opportunity. And we're not going to spend any of the dwarf because we don't want him to lose the two dice. Okay. That's that. Okay, so it's now White's turn. Now, I don't believe I can trade. See, the problem with this game is everything is in cards, so it's really hard to look up rules without flipping through all the physical cards. It just doesn't, it just, you know, the, a standard PDF is what I want, just with all the rules in it. Okay, so this is another, so the rules are so badly done in this game. Basically, when you're in the sunrise box, you can't do anything. So the question is, if this guy is not in the sunrise box, right? He can do free actions. Can he trade and give items to the mage, even though she's in the sunrise box? Now, the English rules say it doesn't mention this at all, as far as I know. I can't find it anywhere. It's All it says is that you can't do anything while you're in the Sunrise box, but all those conditions are talking about the hero in the Sunrise box doing an action. This time, it's the hero not in the Sunrise box trying to do a free action to give an item to a hero in the Sunrise box. Now, I just looked at Board Game Geek, and there's like a huge thread of people arguing. The designer himself says you can... But the rule, the official German rule book, which has the clearest rules, says you can't. Apparently, I don't know. I can't check it. So who knows? Uh, so I'm going to say you can because I don't know. Thematically, I guess I can. I mean, she, why can't he just give it to her if she, it's not her doing the action? So I really don't know what the rule is for that. But the, the, the core rule is that if you're in the Sunrise box, you can't do any actions. But it's actually this guy who's doing the free action to pass the trade. So I really don't know. So if you go to the Board Game Geek, there's a ginormous thread arguing about it and no one comes to a conclusion. So I'm just going to say you can do it. And I'm going to trade the helmet across like that. 
now I have to do some kind of movement, yo. Oh, wait, also, we forgot to take money. So we're going two money to him and two money to her. I'm going to give four money to her. Uh, that four money came from killing the scroll. Remember, she got the the falcon. The reason why I wanted to give her the helmet is so she can use the falcon to send the helmet over to the dwarf. So I still have to figure out what I'm going to do with this guy. He's got two more movement left. So I guess he's just going to go one, two, and then spend the last of his thing to go three and pick up this peasant. And that's, well, and that takes him to here. So it's two movement plus the wine skin. And now it is this guy's turn and he is now going to attack. So... Hopefully he'll be able to do this. So he's just rolling one die by himself. Come on, something big, please. Oh, <laughs> so he gets a seven. Okay, now he has a strength of seven as well. So that is a whopping seven plus seven equals 14. 14 plus four for the prince equals 18. So he just rolled an 18 by himself. Not bad. And now we'll roll for the scroll. Low rolls, please. Whoa, he gets a six. So six and six is 12, which means we're actually plus six because we're at 18. And remember, scrolls only have six health. So, you know, 12 plus six is 18. That means he is dead. Boom. And boom. Perfect. And the reason why that's really good is because this thing is going to advance during the sunrise phase. So any any craziness and monsters that come out of here won't get to move this turn. So if I actually... So next turn, for example, if uh, I didn't kill that, the sunrise phase would move it there. And then I'd kill something and these would come out and then it would all get to move. So it kind of is better for these to activate during the sunrise phase. Okay, did I move him up one for combat? I can't remember. Now, basically everyone is passed. So pass and pass. And I've still got two hours left on this guy. So I'm just going to go one, two and flip over this and get one, two, three, one, two. And that's just put him up. And so next turn, I'll get another three and maybe even be able to pick up these rune stones. We actually have a pretty nasty next round, to be honest. Basically, this guy is going to move all the way up to here. Okay. Still, that is the end of... Oh, wait, we've got to do the turn. Let's do the turn. So, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Draw an event, you blammo. A mysterious illness strikes a farmer down. Choose one farmer token not already in the castle and return it to the game box. We are not... We're going to cancel that using our shield. See the little shield icon? So, we flip over the shield and that is cancelled. End of story. Next, we move all the gores, starting with the low numbers first. So, three moves to one. Uh, 25, 27, 31. Meanwhile, over here, we have 16, 32, and 43 moves to here. Then we have the scrolls move, and he goes 1, 2, 3, 4. Bam. So our castle is threatened again. We do have the mage and this guy close at hand though, so that's not too bad. Flip over the wells. And 
finally, this guy moves the very last and we activate G. The Prince Thranhold is called upon to lead a patrol. He bids you farewell and hopes to fight alongside you in the near future. Remove him from the game board. Okay, so, so much for the Prince. Thanks, mate. You were very helpful. Place one war dock in spaces 26 and 27. Okay, so these guys are super nasty. That's just telling you what's written on the board. So these guys roll two black die, which is very bad because I told you how powerful those die are. So basically, say I was playing a combat with a war deck right now. I roll twice. Bamo. So he just rolled a strength of 10, plus he starts with a strength of 10. So that would actually be 20 to beat that war deck. So they're very, very nasty monsters. Uh, right, and that's the end of that. And, oh, that's it. Okay, there's, there is no second card. So that is the end of that. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points to finish the game. Oh, wait, I keep forgetting to move this guy because he's in the middle of nowhere. I can't see him. Oh, man. Tell you what. This is going to be very, very tight. We do have the Falcon, which is good. All right, yeah, man, this is this is really difficult. Basically, I want to get the Rune Stones. I don't know what these two are yet. Hopefully, they if these are different colors, we're much better. Well, this guy's right down here, so hopefully he can. Hopefully, we're going to randomly pick up one of these monsters. We're going to have to kill one of the monsters around here this turn. I'll probably kill this guy. Maybe the gore. Actually, I might have to kill the gore. Yeah, we're in a lot of trouble. Okay, well, we'll deal with this next turn. And I'll see you guys next time.